Quebec's secular legislation, commonly known as Bill 21, is being challenged in court. The bill passed over a month ago. It bans public employees from wearing religious symbols and requires all citizens to uncover their faces when receiving government services. The National Council of Canadian Muslims and the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, among others, are behind the court challenge. The sticky issue with the law is that it invokes the notwithstanding clause, which allows governments to essentially override parts of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So what are the implications for Francois Legault's government if the law is even temporarily suspended? And what are the repercussions if the law stands? Time for the power panel. In Vancouver, former Conservative Cabinet Minister Stockwell Day joins us. Political commentator and columnist Tiffany Gooch is with us from Toronto. And here with me in studio, political commentator and former NDP MP Francoise Bavin. Hi to all of you. Nice to hey. see you. Fra Francoise, I'm going to start with you. Uh, not only do you reside in Quebec, but you're also I'm a, lawyer. a lawyer. So what, are, what do you think the chances of these legal challenges succeeding are? Um, I, I'm Good luck to them. But um, the fact that the government this time, because other governments, liberal governments in Quebec tried to uh, introduce different type of legislations. Um, it's a topic that's been dividing a lot of Quebecers for a long, long time. We had a big commission, Bouchard-Taylor, uh, to try to resolve the matter and see how we could uh, venture into that uh, whole situation. We have to remember that since the 1960s, with the quiet revolution, um, the Quebec government has, has tended to try to distance itself from religion, not removing freedom of religion. Freedom of religion people is still alive and kicking in Quebec. Everybody still has the right to believe in whatever religion that they believe. What uh, Bill 21 is doing is definitely, uh, from what you described, the only thing I would add is for people in authority. It's not all public servants. No, it's, it's only teachers. It's, it's teachers, prosecutors, prosecutors, yeah. judges, policemen. Because the concept is that these functions should have some type of aura of neutrality. So that's the basis. And that was pretty much the common denominator, except for the teachers, that uh, was agreed upon following the uh, the commission. Um, so, but the government this time, uh, Legault government didn't take a chance. Vashi decided that they would use the notwithstanding clause, because it is an infringement. We have to be realistic, because it is limiting something. But the Charter of Right in Canada uh, permits that with uh, Section 1, Section 33. Section 1 permits you to restrict. Section 33 permits you to use for five years a notwithstanding clause. They also gave uh, a grandfather rights. So people who are already in the system, teachers who are already wearing some uh, religious symbol, uh, can still do so. Um, I, I would have lots to say on that one, but I, I will limit my intervention to say that that is uh, the case with the notwithstanding. I don't think they personally right. that they stand a chance uh, in court uh, with uh, with the exercise of uh, that notwithstanding. Well, let me get, if you guys don't mind, a quick comment from each of you, Tiffany and Stockwell. We just have uh, National Chief Bellegarde standing by. He has to catch a chopper. So I want to do that interview uh, and we'll, of course, continue the discussion. But I do want to get each of you in first before we head over there. Tiffany, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, so I think that it was always clear to us from the moments that this was being debated, when it passed, that uh, that there were specific groups that were going to be disproportionately negatively impacted, and we saw that this was clearly so for, for young Muslim women that were going into teaching in particular, and that was a part of the story that really stuck. And I think that this is, this is there are two fights taking place right now. Of course, there's the actual uh, challenge in okay. the court, but there's another piece on making sure that public opinion is able to continue to understand the ramifications of this bill. Okay, I apologize. Stockwell, I'm very sorry. I will get to you in a second. We just have to jump quickly over to National Chief Bellegarde. He's apparently about to... Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Chopper out of uh, Big River First Nation. I rudely cut you off because uh, National Chief Bellegarde was about to leave on a helicopter. He had to get out of the uh, uh, the meeting there, uh, so we had to go to that interview. But we had been talking about Bill 21, which is the uh, secular legislation out of Quebec, controversial uh, to a degree. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, legal challenges or a legal challenge launched formally today, and we were just discussing some of the implications, both political and otherwise, of that. Uh, Tiffany, you had just spoken stock while I was. I I was heading over to you. So what do you, what do you think about the possibility of this legal challenge and, and more largely the political implications, both provincially for Quebec but federally? Sure, all great questions. Well, Quebec certainly has the right to bring in this type of legislation. I also support the use of the notwithstanding clause in the constitutional guidelines where it can be used. 
And I also have the right to say I completely and utterly disagree with that piece of legislation. It's not in my province, but as a Canadian, I can say I, I think it's just the terrible, terrible legislation. It's pitting people one against another. It's based on a common misunderstanding of what separation of church and state means. People today, many of them in government, think that means there can be no permission of any kind of religious expression. That's not the genesis of that particular phrase. That phrase was used when, when, when a government was trying to impose a certain denomination upon all the people in that jurisdiction. And that led to this this quite right delineation saying governments cannot, should not be allowed to impose one religion above the other. But it's never been meant, it was never intended anyway, to mean there can be no religious expression as long as you're recognizing people's rights. So this, this is a, a, a terrible thing that has happened. It's going to uh, result in all kinds of problems. We just saw today where uh, Malala Yousafzai, and excuse me if I pronounced her name wrongly, last name, uh, honorary Canadian citizen, Nobel Prize winner, shot by the Taliban, an Afghanistan girl, shot by the Taliban when she was 15 for standing up for her rights, and the Quebec education minister saying she would never be allowed to come into a school in Quebec and encourage other girls or other students at the importance of standing up for what you believe. That's the kind of tragic consequence that this very bad legislation brings and I completely hope it loses in court as much as I love the province of Quebec. Okay, I want to bring in Francois for a second, but I do want to just highlight what you were talking about when it comes to Quebec's education minister. What happened was uh, the minister was getting a lot of blowback over a photo that he initially posted on social media. I believe we have that of himself and Malala, who's now uh, 21. As you mentioned, Stockwell, she was 15. She was shot by the Taliban. She's a, a voracious defend, defendant of, of f women getting uh, ed an education and especially uh, in her country uh, and, and elsewhere throughout the world. Many people on Twitter ended up pointing out the disconnect between uh, the minister and, and Bill 21. Some called it hypocritical. And then he was asked if she could teach if, uh, if, she, if she were in Quebec. And he said she could if she removed her headscarf. And I believe, I just want to play a clip, I think we have it, of Premier Legault who was asked the same, same thing and, and he essentially supported his education minister's position. Let's take a listen if we have that clip. I think it's on its way. <laughs> She can teach in Quebec if she accepts to uh, remove a religious sign. That's the decision we took, and it's supported by the vast majority of Quebecers. If I may just say a few things. First of all, there's nothing wrong with the minister, with Minister Robert, who's in as Minister of Education in France. By the way, who's got laws that go way deeper than what Quebec just adopted. But that and that didn't impeach uh, Malala to to be there to present her 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 case and her cause. And I think. We are all proud of what that, that young woman stood for. And I think that's what the minister was referring to, uh, by the fact that she, she's been promoting not religious belief. She's been promoting the right of women, of young girls, to, to get school, to go, to have the right to get an education. That's the case of her law, of her life. And that's exactly what Minister Roberge is all about. So after that, yes, of course, journalists be what they are, right for, rightfully so, asked him, would she be entitled to, because she's wearing a headscarf. So you have to be consequent with yourself. So it's not removing any value of anybody. And we could argue till death do us part, uh, Stockwell. You're against Heaven it. Forbid. And I'm, I'm, Heaven I'm forbid. so for all, all type of freedom and, and rights. I've fought for this all my life. But at the same time, I strongly believe that you have to sometimes just um, have a certain certain uh, legislation just to look at freedom of expression. You have I have to dress up when I go in court. I hate it, but I have to. There's a code, so it's impeaching my 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 right uh, uh, of expression, my freedom of expression. As long as it's not totally unreasonable and it permits the people to continue to believe in what they believe, but when you're exercising a job in a position of authority, where you could influence other people, where you I could guess have... it depends on your definition of unreasonable, Exactly, right? exactly. The but they didn't take a chance. And I think they're right, because I do think that it was pushing it a bit too far, but it's just... In 
I think in five years, they'll review it all and realize that it was a big mountain for nothing and maybe it's not <laughs> needed no more. Uh, Tiffany, and I take, uh, I take Francoise's point around, um, you know, the, the nature of the way that that unfolded with the education minister, but there was a certain irony pointed out irony. with that tweet that I think that's why it resonated so much, right? Like this idea that someone who's such a huge defendant of, of education for girls couldn't actually teach the way that she exists in, in Quebec right now. I think there was a, a, a real moment then that uh, more people were becoming more acclimatized to the fact that this legislation passed. You know, there's different moments when legislation's going through that there can be big uprisings. And I think we saw a lot of protests during the debating of it. When it passed, it sort of, it went away a little bit. And as these uh, court uh, challenges come through, I'm hopeful that this only ramps up, uh, that more people are becoming aware of it, are thinking about the ways within which they can be a part of it, that more legal minds are coming together to figure out ways to combat at it, but also that we don't only see this as a legal uh, issue and we're able to understand the public opinion piece to this as well and that more people that are outraged, like myself, um, are able to find the ways that they're going to be a part of this. Perhaps protests that have those wearing headscarves for uh, for decorative purposes to make it un, 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 uh, difficult to, to know the difference between those that are using it for religious purposes. I, I think that they are going to see, and I hope that we see, uh, more protests and a lot more opposition from uh, Canadians and internationally to this because it, it is an outrage. All right. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.